My on bonny banks and by on bonny braes where the sun shines bright on Loch Lomond where me and my true love will never meet again on the bonny, bonny banks of Loch Lomond. Hi, boys and girls. I'm Rajiv Surendra. You know what I do for a living? I'm a calligrapher. That's right. I make a living writing by hand. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It's great. Really good. So, you know why I'm able to make a living writing by hand? Because not very many people do it anymore. And today, I'm pairing with the Morgan Library. It's my great honor to be doing something for the Morgan to talk to you a little bit about letter writing. So, I want you all to think about how many messages you sent yesterday. How many text messages, how many emails, uh, how many Zoom calls or phone calls you made, how much correspondence you had in the day, and how much of that correspondence is actually going to be around in 100 years. Probably not a lot of it that someone can actually pick up and hold, but a letter is very, very different. You write something down on a piece of paper, put it in an envelope, put a little stamp on it, put it in a mailbox, and the chances are that today, the person that receives it is going to hold on to it. And who knows? Who knows where that's going to be in 100 years? Frankly, that's not why I'm here to talk to you about this. I don't want you to be motivated solely by the future, but, the Morgan has a wonderful collection of correspondence by some very notable people. Jane Austen, Edgar Allan Poe, Queen Elizabeth I, Vincent Van Gogh, and uh, my favorite, my favorite collection of letters at the Morgan is actually a set of letters that are semi-illustrated by Beatrix Potter. So I'm going to read you um, my favorite Beatrix Potter letter. And after that, uh, I'm going to walk you through how to write a letter. So, this letter by Beatrix was written to the young son of her former governess, a little boy named Noel. Falmouth Hotel, Falmouth. March 11th, 92. My dear Noel, thank you for your very interesting letter, which you sent me a long time ago. I have come a very long way in a puff puff to a place in Cornwall where it is very hot and there are palm trees in the gardens and camellias and rhododendrons in flowers which are very pretty. We are living in a big house close to the sea. We go on the harbour in a steamboat and see ever so many big ships. Yesterday, we went across the water to a pretty little village where the fishermen live. I saw them catching crabs in a basket cage, which they let down into the sea with some meat in it, and then the crabs go in to eat the meat and cannot get out. I shall be quite sorry to come away from this nice place, but we now have been here 10 days. Before we go home, we are going for two days to Plymouth to see some bigger ships still. I shall come to see you and tell your mamma all about it when I get home. I have got a lot of shells for you and Erie. I suppose they would not swallow them. This is a pussy I saw looking for fish. These are two little dogs that live in the hotel and two tame seagulls and a great many cocks and hens in the garden. 
I am going today to a place called the Lizard, so I have no time to draw any more pictures and remain yours affectionately, Beatrix Potter. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Isn't that amazing that we have this letter with all of its little doodles? Um, so here's the thing. People today are often intimidated when I encourage them to write letters saying, oh, but my handwriting's really bad. It's not about your handwriting. It's about you leaving your actual mark on a piece of paper. And whether it's messy or beautiful, whether it's short or long, whether it's perfect or flawed, the person that holds that piece of paper sees a real part of you that a cold text message or an email just can't convey. I mean, at the end of this letter, you can see that she wrote the, the end in, in something else. It probably wasn't the same pen. It looks like it was pencil, maybe. Um, and she was rushed. She had to go to a place called Lizard, so I have no time to draw any more pictures. And then she signs off. So um, I just love looking at this wonderful collection that the Morgan has. And, and all these letters are available online. So I encourage you to do that. Now, I am going to write a letter to Anna. Um, and before I do this, I just thought I would tell you a little bit about uh, how to write a letter if you've never done it before, or if it's been a long time since you've written a letter. Um, more the, the psychological aspects of putting together a letter. So. When I write a letter, I open up my pad of paper, and then I usually think about the person that I'm going to write to. And I almost feel like they're sitting right here with me. And when I take my pen and dip it into the ink and start writing, I haven't thought in advance about what I'm going to write. It actually really is a genuine conversation. And what ends up happening is that you genuinely get down um, what you would say to them if they were sitting here with you. So it can be a little intimidating for some people, but you have to just start. You have to just put your pen on the paper and, and start writing. Um, there is a sort of architecture to writing a letter. You know, you start at the top of the page and you start your conversation. And if you get to the end of a page, and you're feeling like you don't really have much more to say, then you should find a way to close it off. And to close it off, not abruptly, um, but to t sort of tie the ideas together at the end and then sign your name. If you have more to say and you start another page, it's much better if you can continue until the end of that second page. Stopping in the middle of a page and signing off there's always this feeling um, that I get from seeing the blank part of a page that, oh, I, I guess they didn't have any more to say to me because um, I was boring. Oh, and, and I know that that's probably not the case, but there is that, there is that sort of unspoken feeling um, that they, they ran out of something to say because they didn't, they didn't fill the rest of the page. So sit down, open up your paper, Think of the person you're writing to, and, uh, and then just start writing. I would now like to read you a letter that I received from, I think, one of the finest letter writers I know. This is my friend Gigi in Ireland. Um, and boy, does she know how to do it. So here's a master. Here's a master at work. 21st of June, 2020. Dearest Rajiv, it's hard to believe it's the summer solstice over and done with. Now the days get longer, perish the thought. For now I am cherishing and appreciating each and every day, long or short, Tempest Fugit. How are you, our dear friend, so far away? It was a real delight to receive your missive, 
so impeccably executed, a joy to behold. It sounds like you are in splendid isolation and quite enjoying it. <laughs> Actually, I have to admit, I am in my element being more grounded and not dashing around. What worries me is I'm in no hurry to get out there into the wide world. I've become yet more reclusive, not that I needed much coaxing. Mr. C is chomping at the, champing at the bit, quite the opposite, missing the crack. It will all unfold and I'm not planning ahead. Our wonderful sunny days are over and we're back to gray overcast days, swirling clouds and morning mists, tempestuous waves in Loch Brackley. I love it. It means I can curl up with a book, do my knitting, or bake a cake without being torn between that or tending to the garden. How are you? Are you still keeping motivated and upbeat? I hope so. This is a melancholy time for you and you're much in my thoughts. Yoga is great for settling the equilibrium and I'm really happy to know you're practicing each day, as am I. I think it's what keeps me going without really knowing it. It's a good discipline, calming and healing. There is absolutely no news from here other than that the cuckoo has flown off and left us to our own devices. We're battling on trying to keep up appearances, cutting the grass regularly, cleaning windows. I read lots, but have a mental block with writing for some reason. My hair is wilder than ever. Anna continues to send regular food parcels, this week from County Galway, fresh pleiche, plas, cod, smoked haddock, and Galway bay prawns. Oh, so delicious. We've had fish three days running, eating it all whilst fresh with samphire, a real treat. Although I have to say, Mr. Tullamore Dew has had to put on a brave face and grit his teeth, fortifying himself before and after with something stronger than the fish itself, you can imagine. So I have promised him a reward, steak and kidney pie tomorrow, made by my own fair hand. I have to admit, there's only a smidgen of kidney in it. I would say more of a threat than a taste, which suits me better. Your biryani sounds quite divine, and I've never actually made one, but love them. By chance today, when I rang Becky, she was in the process of making a biryani herself. Surely this is a sign for me to get my act together and conjure up one myself? Becky went into great detail to explain the gist of it. I had no idea it was so complicated. All that layering with yogurt, absorbing into the rice, I'd better get my act together. Next week, we'll motor to Westport to check out the little house and visit Mother. I believe things are opening up a little now. Shops opening. Not that I'll be doing much shopping, but I do miss seeing everyone, especially family, friends. Forgive this boring attempt at correspondence, dear Rajiv. The important thing is to feel close and know that you are loved. You are by us, and we send you all our love, Gigi and Tony. Look at that. Just tied so nicely together at the bottom of the page. So, think about someone you care about. After you watch this video, turn off your phone. Don't just put it down. Turn it off and put it away and take out some paper and your favorite pen and write a letter to that special person and I guarantee that they will be very moved by the letters you've formed on the page.